I saw the Ahmad Arbery video seven or ten days, I believe, before George Floyd. Like most of you, I'm sure watching those videos shook you and shook me to my core. It made me sick and it made me angry. It was the most despicable thing I had ever seen. I'm lucky enough through my ownership of this wonderful franchise to have gotten close enough to these young men to see and hear their hurt. And all they're asking for right now is to be heard. And I want to ask you individually, are you willing to listen? I don't think I've grown by seeing their anger. I think I've grown by feeling their hurt. And these young men are hurting. America was founded on liberty and justice for all, not liberty and justice for some. For far too long, we have turned a blind eye to racism, discrimination, and the mistreatment of people of color in this country while we send troops around the world every day to help other countries eliminate those same issues. The concept of America from the founding fathers is beautiful. You know, the ideal of it is beautiful, but it's something that a lot of black people haven't really experienced in our history. I'm angry about it and I'm embarrassed about it. I'm embarrassed as an American. Our nation was founded on ideals that are far greater than that kind of behavior. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. I feel like we all need to come together, learn from one another, because I feel the world will be more peaceful. You never know what you can learn from one another. Black lives matter in all places, not just stadiums, gyms, and ballparks. I grew up in Alabama in the 60s and the 70s. I saw segregation, integration, and racism. I saw water fountains for white only and another for colored people only. America has made strides, but we have a long ways to go to secure the victory. To say stick to sports is the worst possible thing that you can feel and say. If my players, both white and black, don't speak out about this injustice to their communities, then they're considered sellouts or hypocrites. If I don't defend my players, then I'm the worst kind of hypocrite. I said, when I'm 80, I'm gonna be talking to my kids and my grandkids about 2020. And they're gonna ask me, Papa, what you do? And I, I want to be able to tell them that I made a difference. We have a, a guest. He said, hi. This is just one of my little girls. She's also biracial. And I don't want her to have to live in a world where she's judged by the color of her skin and she has to choose which side she has to go on, the white side, the black side. And that's not fair to her. You know, she should be able to live in a country where she's accepted because of who she is as a person. This is my spouse. I want to be able to come home to her just like you want to be able to come home to yours. These are my children. I want to see them grow up just like you want to see yours. It's okay not to be scared if a cop's behind you. That's the future I want for my kid. Um, when the cop's behind me, I don't want to feel scared. Um, I want to tell my kid, you know, you don't have to be ashamed of the color of your skin. You know, you are special. You are a black man, a black woman, um, and you are beautiful and you are loved. My heart broke just seeing my wife cry after giving birth to my son. And just realizing that in America, you know, being a black kid and raising a child in this day and age, it is dangerous. That's that's scary. In America, this day and age, you know, you shouldn't have to fear being black. As a white person, it is incredibly important for me to listen and learn. I recognize that I will never fully understand what it feels like to be a black person in America. I also recognize that because of this system in which we currently exist, 
The color of my skin has largely afforded me the ability to not have to think about things that adversely affect people of color. So there lies the question. Are you affected? Would you be outraged if your friend, colleague, family member, favorite player or hero was killed unjustly by those who are ordered to protect and serve? We're trying to stand up for what's right. We're trying to stand up for what's right and make a change, make an impactful change, make a, a, a long lasting change for uh, future generations. I just know that if you do say that you understand and you know why it's like that, just make sure that you're actively doing something to stop perpetuating the cycle. Because by doing nothing, you're perpetuating the cycle. In no culture, creed, religion, race will cancer not be addressed. No culture, creed, religion was COVID not addressed. We was all affected by it and we all did our parts, try to get get better as a community and as a world. But racism, some people tend to not see it because it doesn't affect them. Coach always say, be comfortable being uncomfortable. So now it's time to have these uncomfortable conversations. But when it's time to have an uncomfortable conversation, that's when don't nobody want to have it. Don't nobody want to move on anymore. That same energy that people have from athletes taking a knee should be the same energy that people have for police brutality. I am proud to be an American, to live in a country where I have the right to speak what's on my heart and mind. I believe that God gives all of us life and free will to choose to do the right thing. I think we will all be even more proud to be Americans when we can collectively work together toward a better future for all people. Black Lives Matter. As many times as things have worked out for me in my life, for various reasons, I come back to Ozzy giving me a chance. He didn't have to do that. We're not alike at all. But he saw something in me. He has given me a chance to succeed in this organization based on my merits, based on my performance. Over and over again, he's trained me. He spent so much time with me. And there's a beauty to that. And I think that's the way that this whole thing is supposed to work. And unfortunately, as we see, and we see it at all these different levels, this is a very a systemic thing that we talk about, that it doesn't work out that way, that people aren't given the same opportunities in society. It's not people who look like me who will help drive home this change. It's people who look like my wife that will. Until those who are not oppressed and those who do not face systemic racism come to the aid or defense of us as people of color, the ones that are oppressed and face systemic racism on a daily basis, there can truly be no justice in this country. I want Brock to, to grow up and be raised to see no different in anyone, no matter their skin color or their race or their background, that equality should be with everybody. No one should have to live in fear in this country. My black brothers and sisters are hurting. My responsibility is to help them in every way that I can. I feel all this would be anti-racist. It should not matter about the color of your skin, you know, to treat someone kindly. Long after the protests end, much work will remain to be done. As an organization, we are committed to a long-term sustained effort to achieve racial justice for all Americans. I want to help be the change. I want to help enact change for my brothers, the people that I care about, people that I call family. It's gone on for far too long, and I want you guys to know that I'm with you, and I stand with you, and I'm here for you. I have faith that as a country, we will come together, black and white, we will come together and we will shape this America into the America that we will want our kids to live in. We're the generation that can redeem the ideals of our country, make America what it was meant to be. I believe we will do it. The time to do it is now. Ask the questions, ask the uncomfortable questions, and you will come to the conclusion, I hope, that I have, that you don't feel it enough and you don't live it enough if you're not willing to say it. Black Lives Matter.